guys, so today I'm going to be doing another book kind of wrap up. I'm including my finished books from a year a thon, um, a little book haul, and then onto the reviews for the books that I read during July. So, I'm actually filming this a little bit early. I doubt I'll get anything else read at the moment because I'm kind of focusing on the uh, second book of um, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin so that's a hefty one and I haven't got too far into it so yeah I'm just gonna film this early and assume I'm not gonna finish any more books between now and the beginning of August. So quickly I'll just mention I only started on the last day of um, July's A year -a which was a TBR catch up and I picked up a book that's the first book I actually finished for that month so I'll mention it a bit later um, so I didn't get too far into it um, I didn't finish it on that day or anything but yeah I'm always kind of behind schedule with these um, a year from themes of late so I don't know what's wrong with me I do think I will join in maybe kind of with the a year from theme for August which is non-fiction biography because I've got a few books that fit in that category but whether or not I'll actually actively join and I don't know I don't know that's why I'm not doing a TBR for it so <laughs> I might drift in and out of the theme throughout the month rather than for the set week that it's done in and then I also picked up another book for the read A S O I A F a thon along I don't know what you want to call it that's hosted by Riley Marie and some other booktubers that I'm not too sure about and July's theme or not theme but July's book of the month was um, a Clash of Kings which is the second in the Song of Ice and Fire series because this is a Song of Ice and Fire series read-along. Um, June's one was obviously a Game of Thrones so I'm not that far into that one I started that kind of middle of the month as well. Um, but yeah for now I'll just quickly show you the books that I got. I've only got three and one of them is just kind of like a borrowed book. I've got like a really itchy nose at the minute I keep feeling like I want to sneeze but it's not quite there. <laughs> Um, so the first book I picked up, two of them I actually picked up for £7 together, two for seven in Asda, I love their book deals. And this is Serafina and the Twisted Staff by Robert Beattie. I recently purchased the first one, I want to say in the last couple of months, I haven't read it yet. Um, that one's Serafina and the Black Cloak, um, so I don't know what the world's like and that, that's why I'm not going to tell you what the stop is for this one because I don't want to spoil myself for the first one. And then something that I was, oh my god, I was like almost squealed. I think I did squeal in delight. This is Melissa de la Cruz's Return to the Isle of the Lost, which is the Descendants novel. Um, I read Isle of the Lost a little while ago, and although I didn't do a solo review for it, I loved it. Like, I really, really did enjoy it, which might be a bit difficult to understand from the reflection of this, the amount of stars I gave it. I think I gave it like a three star, but I actually... <laughs> really loved it that is a really good three star um so i'm excited to jump back into this world and i love the film as well which is um disney's descendants i haven't checked out the animated show i don't know if that's a web series or if it's actually on disney channel but i need to try and check that out um but yeah i just i can't wait basically better explain what this is about so isle of the lost follows the children of the evil disney villains they're all kind of trapped on this domed island where they can't leave um and all the kind of good characters from Disney's um, creations are on the rest of the island, like Beauty and the Beast and all that. They're all on the good part of the island. And there's this, I guess, program run where the children, so the descendants of the villains, get to leave um, the domed island to join in high school with all the good characters and it, it just takes it from there like will they follow the path of their evil parents or will they choose their own destiny sort of thing and it's great it's really amazing so seeing them return back to the Isle of the Lost will be an interesting concept so I can't wait to start that I might end up doing a duo review I don't know I may or may not but perhaps <laughs> look around for that I don't know and then the last one I got Quite recently um, this is actually from my cousin she's been loaning me the Skullduggery Pleasant books so this is the third one now uh, Skullduggery Pleasant the Faceless Ones by Derek Landy um, I've yet to put the second book review up yet but um, I wasn't overly keen on that I, I enjoyed it from what I can remember um, but it wasn't my favorite so I'm hoping to love the characters again and fall back in love with the story and really enjoy this one and all of these books and the one I'm about to show you are kind of like purpley reddish tone I don't know why 
some sort of theme that's the colours my eyes have been drawn to of late I suppose um, but those are the books that I got during July and now on to what I finished so I read a collection of short stories another kind of shortish story it wasn't like a full length book but it wasn't a novella um, a full story like a full novel and two comics so a nice diversity not as much as I read the month before so I read five in total but you know good reading done so the one that I mentioned earlier that I had started on the last day of the Ayerathon is this and this is Rick Riordan's Demigods and Magicians um, I always say his last name wrong I say Riordan Riordan I never remember as I'm speaking it so I do apologize um, so basically this is three novellas following the characters from Percy Jackson and the characters from the Kane Chronicles which is a lesser known kind of um, creation of Rick's. It's basically set around the concept of Egyptian gods rather than the Greek gods in Percy Jackson and it's a great trilogy, I recommend that completely. Um, so it's a crossover series between the two main characters in both worlds and I really really enjoyed this. I go into a bit more depth in my review on Goodreads and I also provide links to um, individual stories because I had actually read the first two stories separately before I got this bind up so it was only the last story that was kind of my first time reading it so that's why I have two separate reviews on other formats of the book I suppose you can say so in my concluding review for the whole series I only give the stars for the first two and then I go into more depth about what I thought about the third one so if you want to read that feel free to. So I'll just quickly tell you what I gave each story so for the Son of Sebek I gave a five stars, the Staff of Serapis I gave a four stars and the Crown of Ptolemy I gave a four stars so overall I gave the um, collection of short stories a four stars. I really really recommend this to any fan of Percy Jackson and Kane Chronicles. Um, it's, it was just a nice dive back into that world again and it was something that I was really craving at the time because although Magnus Chase and the Apollo books out I'm kind of trying to save till I have a little bit of spare money to buy the nice American editions online um, because I really like I can't really stand our English editions I don't like people on covers and they just look ugly in comparison I like the like animated versions but yeah really really good book but all the rest were read um, I think through NetGalley so thank you very much to NetGalley but of course my opinions do not change um, so I don't have physical copies to show you I'll just show you the pictures so the next thing I read was a comic and it was Brandon Sanderson's White Sands I had never read anything by Brandon Sanderson before so I was intrigued to kind of see what his writing style was like and I never knew that he did comics so it was actually interesting to find out this was his first work that was never published before he was just constantly going over and over reworking it rewriting it and that sort of stuff until he decided yes I can publish it which was really cool it, it tells you about it in the introduction it's really interesting so basically what this is about it, it follows a world where there's these things there's this I guess a group of people called sand masters um, that means they have the control over sand some of them have different strengths and weaknesses but they have this communal um, control and ability of the sands they live in the desert and it's really interesting how they survive and stuff like that but then they get um, slaughtered and attacked and we're left with the weakest member of the community called Kenton and kind of seeing how he's starting to live his life how he's going to try and fit back into society because everyone else has been slaughtered and him trying to find out who conducted this why they were all killed and why he survived so interesting concept there so I really did enjoy it, I gave it a 3.5 stars, I just felt the, co the whole concept was really intriguing, really unique, I'd not read something like that before, but as I got about a third of the way through, I felt that I wasn't as absorbed into the story as I would have hoped I'd be, um, I was feeling a bit lacklustre in terms of caring for characters, caring for the plot, um, but generally I did enjoy it. It might be a bit strange to note but I really like the panelling, like the way the panels cut across each other depending on what image was in one, it's sort of surrounding, oh, it's really strange to explain but I really appreciated that, it was just a little bit of attention to detail that I liked. Um, one of the issues that I did have, again as usual, you can read my full review on Goodreads if you like, but one of the issues I had was that although the art style was interesting, I found that it was really confusing to follow who was who because particularly with the Sandmasters they all look the same or very similar so I'd see one character and see another and think they were the same people only to find out 
a while later via conversation that they were different so I don't think there was enough um, differentiation between certain characters and it just left me a little bit confused but overall interesting concept I'd love to find out more about um, the world and the Sandmasters in general so I'd be looking forward to later issues and then I read something I think quite a few people on booktube have read and that was The Girls by Emma Klein um, it's her debut novel and oh my god was it wonderfully written so we're following Evie in two frames of mind we're following her in 1969 I believe and then later on in more of like the present time it's about her telling us of her account one particular summer in 1969 where she gets herself mixed up in this strange community and how everything kind of impacted and the events that surrounded it it's kind of based on a true story but i don't know if everybody is aware of what it's based on so i don't want to say just in case it spoils it honestly this must have been the easiest five stars i have ever given to a book everything was just like amazing of course like i had some little irritants with it but generally like oh i was itching to do a proper review of this but i just have too many like reviews and videos needing to be uploaded so i just had to sacrifice something but if I could do a full review of this I would happily do so, it was just such an amazing book and it's strange because I've mentioned before I'm more of like you know a fantasy freak, I don't too often go out of that comfort zone but I've been trying to push myself out there, this is something completely different to what I'd ever read, like what is it even listed in? It's listed as um, fiction, historical fiction, adult and literary fiction which I've never dived into before and I've got to say I really enjoyed it. Evie herself as a character was a very kind of plain Jane, she wasn't exceptional, she was kind of just average and I felt like that was really refreshing reading about a main character not being excellent at something being kind of normal because so often you're thrown with these like heroic characters that you can't really relate to. This was just nice, even though she was in some situations that aren't very pleasant to be in, it was refreshing seeing her kind of, you know, having a main character that's not actually in the limelight if that makes sense things are surrounding her, events are happening that affects her but she's not directly into that and I thought that was interesting to go in that direction rather than choosing a main character that was actually in the events. I really feel like I'm sugarcoating and beating around the bushes but I really don't want to spoil anything like accidentally. <laughs> so I did prefer the past account so when younger Evie was talking just because I felt like it was more in a funny way current like who's hearing her talk about it right now right then it was more exhilarating and scary and it was just interesting to see how she responded quickly to certain things and how easily she was influenced in things um, but it was still interesting to see how the current Evie so the older Evie kind of thought back over on those events and how she how she believed it kind of affected her and stuff like that it was a really really great I go into so much more detail in that review like I don't spoil anything I've got like spoilers removed and whatever I do believe but um oh my god great book I would happily go out and buy it I got so excited when I was in the middle of reading it I saw it in Waterstones and I was like oh, I need to buy it but I'm reading it maybe next time <laughs> but I've five out of five stars please I recommend it wholeheartedly so the next thing I read was another comic this time it was a single issue and it was Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur by Amy Reader, Brandon Montclair and Natasha Bustos sorry if I've pronounced the names wrong um, so this was something that I just saw in passing on a YouTube video and then I discovered that you can read comics online um, I mean I knew about that with manga and I've done that with manga quite a lot but it never crossed my mind that you could do that with comics. I've left the link in the uh, Goodreads review if any of you want to check that out. Um, I think this is a fairly new comic, I hadn't heard about it before. But it's about this girl called, what's her name, Luna and she is super intelligent, she doesn't feel like she's learning anything much at school um, and I think she's trying to sort of work out why she's so smart I think something's happened to her it kind of hints at it but then her world's turned even more crazy when a prehistoric devil dinosaur is just imported right in front of her at school so it just sounded batshit insane and I jumped on that so I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars and you know it was a really agreeable comic for me I did enjoy it but I always find it so difficult to review single issues just because I don't feel that 
the limited time we have is enough to give me enough leeway to figure out right do I really want to continue on with the series or not whereas I feel like a full issue is enough maybe an issue or two is enough to give me enough of an opinion to think do I really really want to carry on with it even though I hate DNF and things it gives me enough um opinion for that you know but you know even saying that I can see myself enjoying this in the future um it didn't do much in terms of um fleshing out other characters and that we were literally just learning about um Luna and her strange smartness and then all of a sudden like devil dinosaur it was just kind of setting up the pace kind of the main idea of where the story might go and the adventures that may ensue so I was happy with that it sounded like a good strong beginning if that makes sense and it was interesting to find out that it's not based on but it hinted at a earlier series which was moon boy and devil dinosaur which is an older series i hadn't heard of before and it's it didn't feel like it was pushing it on you to read like i didn't feel like i was missing anything out but it was nice that they gave you resources for oh if you want to learn a bit more about this reference i suppose check out this issue of moon boy and devil dinosaur but it wasn't like forced on you if that made sense i understood what i was reading i really want to say as well generally the character diversity was amazing i really like that we've got a black um non-stereotypic main character if you know what i mean it's very rare that i at least find books with that and just the characters that i see in passing there's so many different types of people and it's great absolutely great so i think this is one that many people will enjoy um of course i've only read the first issue so that's you know still to be seen but really strong first issue and lastly i read marvel's guardians of the galaxy castaways by david mcdonald so this is um i think it's pretty new as well it's obviously about the guardians of the galaxy quill's done something stupid as usual and everyone has to pay for it so they're on the run from some angry people and they get sucked in to this weird force field mashes up their ship and they get landed on this weird planet that is very reminiscent of european um medieval times now i gave this a three stars and as with thor dueling with giants that you may have heard me talk about i think last month i initially thought this was another comic and i was very disappointed to find out that it wasn't <laughs> again it was the way it was advertised amongst all new release comics or whatever it was in there as well and i'm thinking why is it in there if it's not a comic i don't know but you know trying to think positively i was hoping that i had missed the guardians of the galaxy enough to just kind of disregard that aspect and enjoy it and i don't know i mean it was okay but for example like the humour it was just kind of stiff like it was still funny but it was a little bit less fluent and I mean I've only come from someone who's watched the film I've never read anything about Guardians of the Galaxy before so maybe there's just a difference there but for me it was like an obvious difference it wasn't as um, fluent as the humour and stuff in the film again two different writers and everything I'm sure but it, it's just something that I picked up on did like the little italic parts but I found that they hinted a lot at the um, upcoming characters to be reintroduced into the story if that makes sense maybe if you've read it you know what I mean um, but it was still nice to hear how the other characters um, were doing and what they were getting up to meanwhile I just feel like it was a little bit predictable um, quite early on just generally overall I don't think I'd reread it like for hardcore reading i think it might be something that i could pick up and leisurely read over a long period of time not really think much of it if that makes sense sounds a bit harsh but those are my feelings anyway i do believe that's it for this video it's probably another rambly one i do apologize let me know what your favorite book was of july and maybe your least favorite as well um and here's to another happy month of reading <laughs> take care bye